you know, one of the questions I'm, I'm sure you probably get a lot, and that is, you know, how do you get in the head of a big buck, and, and what are some of the things that you do when you're chasing something, some of these huge white tails? You know, it, it's, there's a lot of different things, obviously, that go into it, and, and all the deer are different according to the part of the country they live in, so you got to take that in consideration. <clears throat> one of my favorite ways to start out, though, is through his stomach. You know, I like to... Uh, I like to put as much uh, food out there for them as I can via, you know, some type of habitat, uh, some type of food plot, whether that's uh, corn, soybeans, alfalfa, clover, uh, biologic, you know, all those things are awesome, and, and that's the way I like to start out. And then you kind of get an idea of, of uh, you start uh, watching them in the summertime, late, late summer, kind of trying to get a pattern down. You start off with that early season. You, get, you start placing your stands kind of according to what you think they're going to do, where they're going to be in September. Mm -hmm. Usually they'll give you a hint of that in yeah. August. And then, you know, then that's what you do. I mean, you, you move your um, strategy according to the uh, season. You can't hunt the same stand in November. Most of the time that you do in September, uh, bucks uh, change your uh, Food source a lot of times in October uh, around the country, according to what, whether you got acorns or whatever it right. might be, and then in the rut it usually can move around again. And then late season, a lot of times it goes back to a pattern similar to the September pattern because yep. they're back on the food. So um, <clears throat> stand placement, uh, being willing to and able to change your strategy as the season changes. Is you know helps a lot too. Excellent, and I and I bet you know if you have an opportunity to be selective on a piece of property, I'm sure that makes a big difference to you know locate some of these bigger bucks. Well, that's that's what allows you to have big bucks so many times. I mean, being fortunate enough to be in a position, have a piece of property, however that m may come through a family member, a lease, or purchase, or whatever that you can uh, let you know two and three and even four year old bucks go. That allows you to, you know, have a, a better opportunity to hunt five and six and seven year old deer, and then, uh, you know, I think another big thing that a lot of hunters have a tendency to do is overhunt their area. I think that happens so many times. Uh, a guy just goes and goes and goes and goes. I think you have to be strategic in your, uh, you know, I mean, you need to pick your stand sites according to the wind. Uh, try not to challenge that wind because most of the time it'll it'll mess you up. But you know if it's if it's 85 degrees and a full moon and the wind's blowing 30 miles an hour, I, I'd suggest uh, hanging out with the family that afternoon because. Yeah. Uh, and that's hard to do, especially when you know there's a big buck. Yeah. That, you know, in the woods. Yeah. And, 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 and get on them. Yeah, and a guy maybe he's worked all week and he really wants to go on Friday afternoon or Saturday morning. But the wind's wrong, or it's hot and windy, or, or full moon, or what, you know, several different things that, that might be coming into play. I think he's actually probably doing himself more justice if he'll just hang back and not, uh, uh, you know, not go that that morning or that evening, or maybe just go observe. If you got a place where you can go see mm -hmm. a pretty good area without actually getting into it, maybe see what does happen, and then pick those uh, strategic times when the weather's right. Uh, the wind's right, and I think you'll be a lot more successful. My number one thing is is the best piece of property that I can get myself on, and then two is the best food. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I've always said you can take the worst hunter in the world and put him in the best spot, and he's going to kill a big buck. Yeah. Or you can take the best hunter and put him in the worst spot, and he ain't going to kill diddly. Yeah. So, you know, you take a pretty good hunter and put him on a pretty good spot, then he'll do good. You know, it might, to me, it's just, you know, you can go through all the tactical things you want to. The tactical things are more important the more challenged you are in the sp spot that you're hunting. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like the piece of property I used to have in Ballard County, Kentucky. I'd throw you out there in any old stand, you're going to kill a buck a good buck because there was just that many deer that is that good a place you know yeah because and he's like he, he the wind's blowing this way it don't matter there'll be one come here and an eye come from that way right you see what i mean yeah.
best food plot he can. And so beyond that, what what can he do yeah. to have the greatest opportunity to harvest the you. best buck that's there? Yeah, and I think one of the that main thing with that is have several stand sites that you can, if you've only got an hour on Friday afternoon after work to hunt or whatever the situation is, you've got a lot of different stand sets that you can set that, that keeps the wind in your advantage. All right, Spook, to condense that down, what, what are the two major points that you think would like kind of summarize everything and bring it all together? Yeah, I think just, just not overhunting your stand. When it's right, the weather's right, the wind's right, you got to be there. And when it's not, hang back and just let it rest that day and, and don't overhunt it. You know, Billy, there's one more thing I'd like to add. I mean, if you're going to kill big bucks, I mean, you got to hunt where big bucks live. So, I mean, yeah, you better believe it. That's, that's the main thing. Hey, these are just a few of the big buck tips that you're going to get from Spook's Fan on stickamarchery.com.